Hello and welcome back again to Charlie's House Call Auto Repair. Today we've got a 2012 Dodge Ram 1500. We've been putting front brakes and rotors in this truck today. First thing we're going to do is get the wheel off. We've got the jack. Truck's already jacked up. We've already got the jack stands in place. Now let's get the wheel turned this way. Now I realize the lighting isn't ideal for this. I'm actually casting a shadow from the light behind me. We got uh, 20 millimeter bracket bolts and 14 millimeter I believe those were 14 no, 13 millimeter caliper bracket caliper bolts we're gonna loosen these up we're gonna crack the brake bleeder loose and then we're gonna start breaking this down right, let's get this pet trainer underneath here so we don't wreck the driveway a little weights and stuff to hold it down with all right, let's get this bleeder screw cracked open. That's an 11 millimeter. Okay, got a little fluid coming out of it, good. Snug that back up for the moment. Cap back on so we don't get any dirt in it. Got a wrench back. Let's get those 13s loosened up. Get those 20 millimeter loosened up. A 13 16 will work, by the way. Okay, this is going to be breaker bar time. Careful of your brake line. Okay, those are loosened up. The other one I gotta get underneath the brake line for. And once you've gotten those loosened up, grab your C clamp. Sorry. Put your seat clamp on the brake pads and just gently push it in just a little bit. The idea is so that you can get it over the lip of the rotor. Again, being careful of your brake line. Just a little bit on the other side just to play it safe. Plus, this will also give you an idea what kind of condition your pistons are in. If they go back easily, you're in good shape. Now we're all done with the C-clamp. That's the only thing we're going to be using it for. Just to buy ourselves a little space. Now we're going to use a brake hook to suspend the caliper. Let's get this caliper off. Causing a problem. There we go. Now take your hook, put it on the inside, and hang it outward. Now these are pretty stuck. Oh wow, these are really stuck.
really stuck. There's the outboard. Got about four millimeters evenly worn. And maybe three millimeters evenly worn. Wow. I haven't seen brakes this stuck in a bracket in a long time. Alright. And it's just starting to go metal to metal on the edges. And it is kind of be quite chalky probably from being burnt but this is a little uneven but not by much so well let's get this uh, bracket loosened up now side, over that side, rotor off, and we're going to get the hub surface all cleaned up. Now the scaling and the rust on this isn't all that bad. Is a little bit right in here. You scrape that off. You don't want any scaling on this surface or this surface because of the way it meets on the inside of the rotor and the back side of the rotor. If there's any stuff built up on this, it will cause a wobble in your rotor and pulsation in your brake pedal. it down real good with some brake cleaner. Hit it with the wire brush again. And one more rinse. with some fluid film. You want to make sure you get around here and around in the middle where the rotor sits. Don't go so crazy with it that it starts to run on you just a little bit. And then put your brand new rotor on. Now these brand new rotors, even though they are a painted surface, they do have the protective oil on them. So we're going to need to remove it from the bag and Use some uh, brake clean to get all of the protective oil off of it. The fingers are already dirty from doing the other side, so I'm going to try to not handle this too, too much. Now make sure you clean up your landings for your caliper bracket. There's some scaling right there. You want to get that out of there so it doesn't interfere with the mounting of the bracket. that a little shot of fluid film as well. And it'll just help in the future keep it from getting a mess. Now let's get this rotor cleaned and put on. Give it a good soak down. And using cloth saturated and wipe it down with that and just help just get anything thick off of it and then rinse it down again
lint from the paper towel off. Make sure that the inside of your rotor is clean before you put it on. All right, now that you got the inside of your rotor all nice and clean, go ahead and put it on. Pull the dust out of it. And then grab one lug nut. And somewhere around here I've got an axle nut. Slide the axle nut on opposite side of where you're doing your caliper. The reason you're using a larger nut is because your lug nuts are going to bottom out on the stud and they won't hold the rotors, rotor firm. Go ahead and spray down the rotor again. Wipe it down. And then rinse it again. Now, these brackets are all pretty rusty, so we're going to have to clean these out. You can't leave any rust or any scale in here because it will cause what they call rust jacking and it'll lock your brake pads in place. So we need to get these all nice and cleaned up and then we need to get these re-lubed. This outside's all dried off so we're going to add some silicone grease to them to soften them back up again. And then just wire brush and a file. I use the wire brush first to get all the loose stuff off, then the file, and then go back to the brush. Some brake cleaner, and then we can put some anti-seize on the bracket. Yeah, rip a hole right through the pet trainer. Now examine the rotor or the caliper bracket. Make sure, see this all this pitting and bumps. That's all rust scale. Okay, so we're gonna have to use a file and get all of that rust scale off of there. Mueller caps. It's a German file specifically made for this purpose. It's not designed to take down metal, but it is designed to take off the rust scale. It changes it a little bit. Just keep going until you start seeing clean metal. Do that on both sides. Now, once you've got the caliper bracket all cleaned up, you can start working on these pins. Try to keep myself in a position where you guys can see. All I need. Silver glide. We're gonna need anti seize. We're going to need new brake pads, right, right here, metal clips, let's get this taken apart, start with the outside of the boot, outside of the boot, dislodge the pin, leave the boot on bracket, and then we'll do these one at a time, pull it, ugh. Pull it out, wipe the old grease off. Okay, get your pin nice and clean, double check the wear on it. It's a little polishing, but nothing all too bad. There's no rutting. And I'll take the uh, brake clean and just blast away from your face. Get that out of there. The other pin just fell out. Take the clean, the new pin or clean pin, and we're gonna coat that with grease. And then work it around the inside of this. I should have got it first. That brake cleaner out of there. Yeah. And then just rotating this. Work your grease into it. 
grease any outside. Squeeze it in. And get your wrinkle, wrinkle, wrinkle. And we're gonna take a little bit of extra grease and we're gonna run it around the outside. Just to kind of recondition this a little bit. right here it doesn't dry out and perforate we'll wipe this off in a few minutes just work it in real good get really dirty probably should have worn gloves but now we're gonna do the same thing on the other side clean that one out another pin get that all cleaned off fresh grease on this one. Always use silicone grease so you don't hurt any rubber components like the rubber boot. You don't want to coat it with too too much because you don't want it to get stuck in the bore. Make sure everything slides in and out nice and easy. Work it down into your boot. There's your wrinkle wrinkle. Good vacuum seal. Let's get the outside of this coated with some fresh grease. Okay, now let's get the anti-seize into the track. Where'd your cap go? There it is. Always remember to put your caps back on. Keeps you from making a mess, keeps you from losing contents, keeps you from getting dirt in the contents. All right. And he sees. We need more weight on the back side of this. Wind is starting to kick up a little bit. To the bracket, go back to the bracket, go back to the bracket. Now let's get all of these surfaces in here coated so that we can help slow and or prevent future rust. Now don't put so much in there that you squeeze it out onto the rotor when you put the hardware in. Just enough to get a good coating on it. Make sure you get inside this little landing right in here also you can't see it too well but you got to get right in there and in there as well double check everything make sure you got all your little landings and edges once you do you're done with the anti seize I'm gonna go ahead and start situating the brake pads many jobs I like to do the brake pads on the bracket after putting them on the rotor in this case we're going to put them on ahead of time these little clips are a little different than most these little clips actually snap on the outside of your brake pads first the little ear facing outward and then they snap in like so there is no inboard or outboard with this particular set of brake pads again same thing just put the clips on the outside of the brake pads facing out Now let's go ahead and put our bracket, and let's put these right into the bracket for now. Make sure everything actually fits in without having to fight. That's super. Super. As long as the brake pads are loose. Always, always, always make sure your brake pads can move freely. If they don't, they bind, they get stuck, you're doing it wrong. You need to make sure that the bracket is cleaned up properly. So that you have adequate space for your brake pads to move. If they don't, they'll lock up, they'll wear unevenly, they'll wear prematurely, they'll rust into place. It'll, it'll just cause a bad problem and a quick comeback on a brake job. These brakes should last at least two, three years. Depending on the quality of the pad, of course. So now we got that all set. Let's get these brake caliper back in place. We're going to put some 
blue thread lock on the, uh, the bolts. One drop. Don't go nuts with this stuff. You do want to be able to get it back out someday. But this will help to keep the threads from rusting as well as keep the bolt from coming back out from vibration. And then take your bracket with your brake pads and gently set it over. Try to not knock your brake pads out. And put your top bolt in first. I'd swing you guys to the camera angle down here, but unfortunately, the light's to my back. So, y'all, you'll see your shadows in my back. So I'm going to turn the wheel again so you can see what I'm doing here a little bit better. You know, brake pads like to pop back out of place really easily now. Now let's get those 20 millimeter bolts nice and tight. Now don't tighten them all the way initially. Get them both in nice and you know, kind of snug, but not tight. And the reason for this is just to make sure that your caliper bracket is actually seating in its natural position and it's not going to cause it to warp or bind because you've got one side tight and the other side's a little misaligned and you tighten that one up, you twist, twist the bracket. So just little by little, each one. And once you've got everything nice and snug, then go ahead and tighten it down. Give these a good old torque. Uh, you can usually find your torque specifications online. Click. And click. Right. Everything's nice and happy there. Now on to the caliper. Now what we're going to do is we're going to push the old brake fluid out of the caliper and into a, a catch bottle and then when we're done We'll refill the master cylinder with fresh brake fluid before pumping the brake pedal back out. Now there we can get the old crappy fluid that's in the caliper out of it and get new fresh fluid into it. It's not really a full brake flush, but it's a partial brake flush. special tool right here is for pushing the calipers back, the pistons back, it does both of them. Now, I was trying to give away one of these not that long ago. I will be doing it again soon. I'm coming up on 2,000 subscribers and I think that'll probably be a good time to try again. I've got a brand new one to give away. We weren't able to get a hold of the last person who uh, was the winner. 48 contiguous states. Um, There'll be a comment and stuff like that. Just keep watching the future videos. We'll be giving this away pretty soon. Gonna slide this up in here. Actually, you need to back it all the way off first. All right. Now, so that we don't force any of the brake fluid back up into the master cylinder, Got our line pliers. I'm going to very lightly clamp the brake cable, or brake hose, lightly. Don't want to do any damage to it. It might not even be tight enough to prevent it from going up, but it'll help. Now we're going to loosen the bleed screw back up. Get the hose hooked up to it. And where's my 11 millimeter wrench? Right here, get that onto the hose. Actually, we need this where we can tighten it back up when we're done. And we're just going to put this over the end of the bleeder screw. Start putting some pressure on the caliper. And then loosen up the bleed screw.
These pistons should go all the way back in without having to fight with them. If you have to fight with them, the chances are good there's probably rust in the bore and it's going to cause problems. And when it's bottomed out and you still have pressure on it, tighten down your bleeder, remove your tool, slide your caliper down over your new brake pads, remove your bleed hose, and at this point, Grab your little bolts that hold your caliper on and put a drop of blue thread locker on those as well. Just a little bit. Now this serves two purposes. It keeps it from vibrating loose and it also coats the threads so that they don't rust and get stuck in there from rust. In some cases like this, it also helps to lubricate the threads. All right, now, just real quick, crack your bleeders back open again. You've got to double check by gravity bleeding that there's no air left in the top. As soon as you open it up and fluid starts coming out, you know there's no air in there, go ahead and snug it back down. Don't forget your little cover. Get the yuck that's in here out of it. There you go. And then put a little bit of silicone inside the cover. Just like that, just fill it up and then snap it down on there that will help keep the bleed screw from getting rusted inside and out, on the outside it'll make it easier in the future go ahead and release the line pliers make sure that it didn't take or keep any kind of a pinch in it which is good everything moves nice and easy let's get those 14 millimeter 13 millimeters torqued down Click. Click. Double check. Take your lug nut back off. Go ahead and put the wheel back on. Clean this space up here a little bit. Where did my brake cleaner go? This goes back in my toolbox, so I want to keep it clean. Check, check, double check. That's torque, that's torque, that's torque, that's torque, that's tight. That moves. We are all set and ready to put the wheel back on. Get the pet trainer out of the way. This way here, see, we're not leaving any mess behind. square across the top. Let's get this thing lined up so we can lift it up in place. And go ahead and put all of the lug nuts
nuts on my finger. And go ahead and spin those down on. And I like to do it very lightly. There's no serious tension on it yet. The purpose for this is so that we can help center the wheel in case anything's just a little bit out of whack. You know, a little bit off center. Things get worn. It happens. But I find that this helps to prevent any squeaking or vibration when you're going down the road. That noise is the jack in the back side of the tire. And I snug them down a little bit. And I snug them all down the rest of the way. Let it down off the jack. Jack stands out first. Now go ahead, tighten down those lug nuts. Back double check them. And just for kicks, double check them again. but not least, top off the brake fluid. Now put a little small hole on one side, a larger hole on the other side so that it doesn't chug when you try to pour it. You actually get a controlled pour. And we're just going to fill this to the max line. Now you can use a flashlight and aim the flashlight through the container if you have a hard time seeing where your brake fluid level is. But once you've got it to the max line, you put your cap back on, pump your brake pedal, get your brake pad seated in place. slow back down from about 40 down to a complete stop about four or five times nice and easy that should seat your brake pads in verify that everything is working correctly so if you guys like that one feel that one to be helpful informational entertaining please feel free to like comment and subscribe don't forget to hit that notification bell and most importantly remember you've got no more excuses pick up those wrenches 